And welcome back. Uh, today we're talking about multiplying polynomials. I was doing more uh, more complicated examples. I know in my first video I stated that I was going to do three videos. I'm actually going to cut that. I'm just going to do two videos. Uh, the second one that I'm going to do is going to encompass the, the two harder types of multiplying polynomials. Uh, I just have one example of, of this one, which is a binomial times a trinomial. Uh, and then I have another one where actually we're going to have three different parentheses. And I'll show you how to expand that here in a moment. Okay. Um, in this example, I'm just going to kind of go over the basics of this, um, and I'm just going to do one example. Um, now, what you got to think here is th this is a process you've actually have seen before. If you're at this level of mathematics, you've also seen um, this something like this. Uh, I'll do a quick example. X minus 5 times the quantity x plus 2. Um, this right here, it's a binomial times a binomial. You've done this before. It's called foiling. First outer, inner, last. That's why we call it FOIL. It's, a, it's an easy, easy way for us to remember what to multiply. So you take first x times x to get x squared. You take your outers x times 2 to get 2x. Inners i, negative 5 times x here to get negative 5x. And then L is last, negative 5 times 2 for a negative 10. These two middle terms here are alike, so we're going to add those together for a negative 3x minus 10. Okay, now that, that right there, that's foiling. This is something that you have done before. Now, this is actually the, the exact same process of what I'm about to do over here, except for foiling is a little bit easier. This is a little bit harder because we just have more to multiply. Okay, so that's kind of some backstory there. All right, to get rid of that, and let's get on to our actual example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this example, and I'm going to show you the different multiplications that I'm going to do. Okay, now first, uh, what I suggest here is that you always take the smaller one times the larger one, meaning I'm going to take this term, I'm going to take th these two terms times the three terms over here, and I'm going to start with this A here. I'm going to take this A times everything in here first. I wouldn't, I wouldn't switch that around. If you flip that around, what would basically happen is you take 2 times everything here. 5a, negative 5a times everything over here twice. And then it's, it's, just, it's just a messy process. It's actually easier to go the other way. So I'm going to take this a times 2 first. Okay, so that's going to be 2a. I'm going to take a times negative 5a, negative 5a squared. The only thing that's really increasing is the variable. There's only an a that we're multiplying by here. So notice that's just the variables are increasing. So that's going to happen over here is a times a squared is going to be a to the third. Okay, so there's your first multiplication. Um, now, different teachers will call this different things. Uh, some call them rainbows. Some call them arcs. Uh, I don't usually use them very often, but I know it, it's helpful for students to do this so they can keep track of what multiplications they're doing. Uh, so I, uh, I'll show it here. Uh, but anyway, the second multiplication that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 3 here, and I'm going to multiply it times everything inside. So take negative 3 times 2 to get negative 6. Uh, negative 3 times negative 5. Be careful of the double negatives there. So this is going to be a positive 15a. Negative 3 times negative 5a. And then last is going to be negative 3 times a squared, which is just a negative 3a squared. Pretty easy there. Okay, now I have this color coded so that you can see. Okay, so the, I got the top three multiplications to get three here, the bottom three multiplications here to get these three red ones over here. So basically, you have a binomial times a trinomial. You have a two term times a three term. Notice two times three is going to give you six different terms. Okay, now that's actually going to happen every time. You can figure out how many terms you're supposed to have based on what you're multiplying by. Two terms times three terms is going to give you six terms. Okay, so it's, it's just one strategy you can use to, to kind of help yourself out to make sure, oh, do I have all the multiplications I'm supposed to have? Well, two times three, yes, yes, I do. Okay, um, anyway, now we need to add some like terms. Right here is uh, a to the third. Negative a to the third is going to be negative two a to the third. And then go down one step to your a squared, which is right here. Um, oh, hey, what am I, what am I doing? What, what, what is going on? That's a to the third. That's a squared. That's not even close to being the same. What are you doing? Okay, backtrack. a to the third is all by its lonesome. All by its lonesome. There's an a squared. So negative 5a squared, negative 3a squared is a negative 8a squared. Very handy to make sure that you label these like I did with the underlines because it, <laughs> it was pretty easy for me to realize my mistake right there. But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, I got the, got the cubes. I got the quadratics. I got my squareds there. Um, and I got my A's left over. One, two, three lines for that one. One, two, three lines for that one. That makes a 17A and then minus 6. There we go. All righty. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that was multiplying polynomials. That's one of the uh, different problems that you will see. Um,
Again, pretty straightforward. Um, the, the difficulty here is that you just have to keep everything organized. Uh, just make sure, like with these underlinings that I do, with these arcs and that kind of things, uh, find something that works for you so you but kind of keep track of everything. Um, anyway, the next one I'm going to do, expanding a power of a binomial. So this one, um, this one is always trip, uh, trips everybody up. Uh, there's a really, really common mistake that happens with these type of problems. I'm, I'm going to show you the mistake first. And then I'll go through and actually work out the problem. Okay. Now here's the mistake. A lot of kids like to do this. They like to say, "Oh, well, I just take this 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 three here, this exponent of three, and I, I'm just going to apply it to the k and apply it to the negative five. That is actually incorrect. That is way way off. You're forgetting a lot of multiplications that you have to do. So this is not is not k to the third minus five to the third. It, this this is not even close to what what the actual answer is going to be. Okay, that's the most common mistake that I see. So just don't don't make that. Don't assume that. Okay, so this is actually what we're supposed to do. Okay, we have k minus five. This quantity we have three of them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this as k minus five, k minus five, and k minus five. Okay, you have three of those parentheses. So uh, this is what we mean by expanding it. Okay, you're going to write it out like this. Now, uh, before I go any further, there is a way to, to quickly do this. There is a pattern that's associated with higher powers of binomials. Um, you can use Pascal's triangle uh, uh, um, to to uh, kind of get through this quickly, but I don't have time to go over Pascal's triangle and just kind of show you any of the basics of multiplication. Um, if you if you can figure out Pascal's triangle on your own, fantastic! All the more power to you. But we're just going to stick with the basics here. Okay. So now back to back to the problem. So I have k minus five times itself three times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply. Now you can only multiply two of them at a time. Don't you can't multiply all three at once. That's just way messy. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these last two over here and multiply them. So this k minus five over here, I'm just going to leave leave this guy alone. I'm going to multiply these two right here. Now it's a binomial times a binomial. So this is just foiling. So the, the process I just showed you a moment ago, what you're already supposed to know, that, that's that's it. That's all we're doing here. So this is going to be k squared minus 10k uh, plus 25. Okay. Your 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 first outer inner last is going to multiply to this. Now. Um, uh, you might want to pause the video and actually multiply it out. If you don't know where this comes from, you might want to multiply this out yourself to get that. I skipped a few steps there. But anyway, um, now moving on, uh, kind of the same deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, just like the last problem, I'm going to take K times everything first and then negative 5 times everything. Now, I'm not going to show all my steps here. I'm, I'm not going to do the little arcs and that kind of stuff. I'm just going to kind of truck through this. Okay, so I'm going to take K times everything. So that's K to the third, K squared, and 25k. There we go. Um, basically, that first multiplication is just taking k times everything. All of these, are, their k's are going to increase by one. So to the third squared, and then this 25 is actually going to get a k. All right. So that was kind of easy multiplication. The next is I'm going to multiply times negative five. So negative five times k squared is negative five k squared. Nice looking five there. Get rid of that. That's atrocious. There we go. And negative 5 times negative 10 is a positive 50k. Make sure you keep track of the negatives. And then negative 5 times 25 is uh, 5 quarters is $1.25. So that's negative 125. There we go. All right. And uh, add some like terms. Combine your like terms together. Um, k to the third is all by his lonesome. Uh, here's my squared. There's a squared. So I have negative 15k squared. Add the coefficients together, right? Um, now I go to the K's, double underline here, double underline here. I get 75 of those K's. Remember, the coefficients increase, not the exponents. Okay, so the numbers out front are increasing, but not the exponents themselves. The exponents are staying the same. Um, where am I? This is why we underline things. Oh, negative 25, that's where I am. Negative 125, excuse me. All right, and that's it. That's how you expand a power of a binomial. Now, there's higher, there's higher powers you can do to the fourth or to the fifth or to the sixth, and that's actually where Pascal's triangle might be um, easier to use. Is if you take k minus five, if you take this to the seventh, eighth, or twelfth power or something like that, it's going to take you a very long time to multiply. And Pascal's triangle, that method, it would actually be a lot quicker. Um, but anyway, uh, that's 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 something else for another time. Um, again, make sure that you develop a strategy to this and just keep track of everything, whether it be showing the arcs on your multiplications. Uh, I still do these underlines just to just to make sure I'm. Um, 
uh, just to make sure I, I get everything. As you can see by my, my mistake earlier, that underlining actually saved me on that my, my mistake. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think that's about it. That's multiplying uh, some polynomials, some little bit more difficult examples. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.